In this video, I'm going to be breaking down exactly what I think in a live head-to-head -head Mutt Weekend League matchup in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, I just want to encourage you to click that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on my YouTube channel. Now, in this video, like I said, I'm going to be going over my nickel 335 wide defense and my trips tight end offense here in a live weekend league game of Madden 21. My channel is devoted to helping people get better at the game, and one of the ways we do that is through um, tutorials, gameplay strategies, uh, just like this right here. So that's what we're rocking with today. Uh, here, kind of opening up, my opponent's running a uh, little uh, kind of a level sale concept. Really kind of broke down for him, but he's able to get the the uh the, the kind of garbage time little route there so just going to be kind of looking out for that i want to talk about something um that i've actually been realizing a lot more over the last couple of weeks and um i kind of started to notice that we were talking a lot about the mike blitz three and we were talking a lot about how it is you know the meta for a reason obviously this right here is why you get yourself mid zone ko mid zone ko activates so much right now in flat zone ko so basically my abilities really quickly before we go too far into this game uh my abilities on defense pretty much everybody has uh mid zone ko on them as far as like a corner um or a secondary player you know either a corner or a safety either those they all have um mid zone and flat zone ko on them for just two ap because that's what you that's what it costs for zone archetypes i find that they really react really really fast in zones and they animate really really well and, and you're just going to find you're going to have a lot of success uh with those abilities and right now at least that's what i'm finding um for myself so uh, that's first second thing i want to talk about is second thing i want to talk about is mike blitz three and cover three as a meta defense right now in madden 21 i want to explain why it's so good and I want to explain uh, why it's different than regs. Why Mutt Head to Head or Mutt Weekend League is a lot different of a game than, than regs. Um, and it has to do with the ratings of the players. Because everyone at this point in the season, because everybody is 99 awareness, 99 zone coverage, 99 man coverage. Because of that right there, that one thing alone changes everything for how people are going to play. Um, it's why zone is so much more meta than man, because if they're just man to man, then they're going to be able to beat the man to man coverage relatively smoothly, relatively easily, because they have things like short in elite on them or mid out elite or whatever, or they have 99 route running. So man coverage is not exactly a meta right now, primarily for that reason. The second thing, though, is a lot of the cover three bombs I've noticed in Mutt. Um, I've noticed they just don't work right. They don't work as well as they do um, in regs. And the primary reason that I think that's the case is due to the high overall, the high awareness, the high zone coverage that you have in Mutt. Players don't get glitched out as much. That's just my experience, kind of what I've been seeing. Defense is a lot better, in my opinion, on Mutt than it is in regs. I find it much, much better um, on, on Mutt. So anyways, all that to say, um, and here we're going to get another pick for the defense um, all that to say, I've kind of gone back um, to a simple defensive strategy. And the reason why I've done that is because I want to force somebody to beat me over the top in a, in a cover three situation. Now, I know there's still ways to beat cover three over the top. I'm not naive to that. And I've posted some of those on the channel. But I'm saying as a starting point, I think you've got to force them to beat the Mike Blitz three or force them to, ble to beat your cover three Mabel coverage before you go in any further before you do anything else just force them to have to have to kind of um work with that and in my opinion you're going to find yourself having a lot more consistency on your defense because the number one reason that i find myself giving up big plays on defense is a hundred percent related to whenever i don't get my setup in if i don't get my setup in if i don't get my adjustments made and I'm out of position, the offense catches me out of position, that's where I personally find the biggest vulnerability to the defense. And so, uh, anyway, all that to say, I'm trying to kind of keep things a little bit more simple on defense, and I'm finding a lot more success the more I do that. So I've got, a I've got several different types of coverages. I've talked about this before, the five sets for success on defense, um, a match coverage, a zone coverage, a run defense, a man coverage, and a blitz. Those are the five things that I think if you could do those five things at a high level, you're going to find a lot of success um, 
you're going to find a lot of success. Right here, I love this little playmaker hitch. This is one of the most underrated routes in the game. This little hitch to the circle receiver here, because you can playmaker that against man and will typically have a pretty decent, um, pretty decent level of success, pretty decent success rate. Uh, so right here, just kind of running my trips tight end stuff, just kind of working the ball up in the field. Honestly, um, right there, got a kind of a lame throw there from uh, Brett Favre. Now, one of the things I will say about cover three really quickly um, is if I know that they are running a lot of cover three on me, um, then, you know, that's going to, you know, I have some ways to attack it, obviously. But I'm just saying for you, as a starting point, um, as a starting point, I don't know why that guy won't play me. I'm just going to throw it away. Um, as a starting point, you want to you want to be. Um, I, I believe that it does make a lot of sense to run a 30, uh, 10, and 10 Mabel coverage. I think that works really well against a lot of things that people like to do. So um, that's what I've been rocking with, and it's been very very successful for me so far. All right, fourth and six. I've been a little bit vanilla on offense. Um, I don't want to turn the ball over. Honestly, I probably could kick a field goal here. But to be completely transparent with you, I don't trust myself to kick the field goal. So uh, we're going to go for it and see what we can do. I have a feeling this curl will be wide open. Actually, we've got this out route. That's a nice little route right there. Nice little route bounce from Randy Moss. That's beautiful. Uh, just spacing. That's why I like trips tied in so much. And real quick, I didn't say this in the beginning of the video. If you want to get my full nickel 335 defensive guide that kind of explains in detail the scheme that I'm running, then you can get that in the description for just 15 bucks. And if you want to get my full trips tied in uh, offense that explains everything that I'm doing on trips tied in, you can get that for just 10 bucks. And I'm actually getting ready to uh, kind of overhaul that a little bit. I've been kind of doing a lot of new stuff out of trips tied in. So we've got some more uh, stuff that we're going to continue to add to that, add, add to that specific trips tied in uh, offensive guide. So that's going to be coming out soon. But anyways, this quick base right here, um, really, really good run. Of course, I had bad stick right there, but uh, really, really good run. Another run, this is something that I've been doing actually too, um, this RPO bubble. Now, you got to watch this, uh, this linebacker here, but if that linebacker shoots out, we'll just run the ball. If he doesn't shoot out, we'll just throw it. It's like right there. You see that, right? see that route right there? That, I find that route is super, super uh, frustrating for people to guard. Because the way you have to stop it is you have to pass commit, but you also have to either have man coverage on it or you have to have some type of like uh, zero yard kind of hard flat type of situation. So I also find that that's a really, really good route combo. Okay, so right here, this situation, we're just going to try to see if we can hit. Um, we've got this flat over here. We're just going to take that, try to get a field. And that's fine. We're okay with taking three. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we get the football at halftime. Uh, I talk about this every video that I try to do inside the mind gameplay tutorials. You want to make sure that you are kicking the ball if you can. So if you, in your settings, if you win the coin toss, you always, always, always want to kick. There's never a good situation to be on offense first in Madden. In, in, in regular football, I don't think there is either, but there could be some arguments to be made about that. Because the because of the time, because of the the fact that there's only you know four minute five minute quarters, having more possessions in the second half is super super important. Because the reality is you're you're gonna have more than likely um, you're gonna have a maximum of like eight possessions a game. I think somewhere it's like six to eight possessions is probably probably about what you're gonna have unless you're like in just a crazy game. So. That's, that's kind of my recommendation to you. But as you can see here, you know, we're keeping things really simple defensively. We're just running our Mabel coverage. Um, we're kind of trying to just protect against the run, trying to see if he has anything to beat it, honestly. I mean, most people don't, especially in mud. Most of the cover three beaters that will beat um, coverages in regs, they don't beat them in mud. Players don't get, gl get glitched out as much. People really have to work more for their yards in, in, in mud, in my opinion. That's just what I'm finding out. And so, you know, it's really, really, you know, just trying to kind of, again, foresee like something like that. They're going to have to run these spacing concepts, these underneath concepts. That's how they're going to really move the ball. And then what we can do in our arsenal, because, and let me just show you really quickly after this two-minute warning here. Um, I want to show you what my zone drops are that I'm running. So my coaching adjustments, you're going to see here that I'm running 30-yard flats, 10-yard curl flats, and 10-yard uh, hook curls. Now, when I see somebody go to, like, sing about deuce close or something like that, one of the other things that I really like to do, this helps a lot with cover three leaders, is if you just simply baseline. I find that baseline really does help a lot. So he's going to get some routes here, uh, trying to go with that little post beater. 
and we're able to have really solid all-around defense. So far, the defense is doing exactly its job right now. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty good performance so far on the defensive side, and we've honestly really, we've literally just ran, you know, Mike Woods three and said, beat me with label coverage. One other thing I want to talk about from an abilities perspective, um, actually, I guess two things. So the first thing I want to talk about is the golden ticket linebackers. Um, so I've put, I've put, so I got the new Lawrence Taylor, but the problem with the new Lawrence Taylor is his archetype and his card is a ultimate legend. Um, he's not a, he's not a golden ticket. And the reason that that matters is because if you know anything about golden tickets, you're going to know that the golden ticket cards get specific, like they get multiple archetypes, which means they basically get different types of abilities for different types of AP. It's why like Mike Evans can have, he's a man to man archetype corner, but he can have flat zone KO for just one AP because of that golden ticket. So there's, you know, different little tricks with that. So what I've done is I've had, I've got two golden ticket outside linebackers, but they have a, like a little caveat that allows them to get a uh, lurker on them. And the reason why I like this so much is because it's really, really, really good. Um, I can now drop both of my defensive ends into coverage and they'll literally they'll play just like a just like a slot would. They'll, they play really really well in coverage. They're a bad user, but they play really really well in coverage. And so like Jay, Dave on Connie made like a crazy interception for me yesterday, um, like absolutely insane, just because of that uh, that fact. So uh, again, you know I like to put them in coverage. Uh, a lot actually so as you see here good solid defense and this the, the reason I like this defense it's not just that it's it's good obviously it's good right um, it's not just that it's good you know for certain situations for most situations really for most of the power routes the reason I really like it is it forces your opponent to have to work over the middle of the field which is where your user is as you see right there where your user is and it's gonna force a lot of stuff like that that's why this defense is so good people it's it's the meta for a reason and if you if you don't want to run them up you want to run off meta it's just a basic simple coverage that's all it is but when you combine that with other things that we already do then you're going to find a lot of success anyway we're going to go back to this rpo zone where rebel i just want you to watch this left side we're mainly just trying to see if they jump it if they don't jump it we're going to throw it if they do jump it we'll hand it off so just okay no jump okay we'll go and you see, it's such a natty little play. It's one of those plays that, in my opinion, you really want to come out in. You don't want to, you, 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 because it is a different alignment. There is a little bit of a tell to it, but, um, you know, it's just a really, really good play. So, anyways, right here, I'm going to kind of do a little four vertical setup. I really like this four vertical setup right here. And that right there is why. That little tight end route is so powerful, especially against cover three. Again, a lot of people like to run cover three uh, for good reasoning. But if you have the right routes on the field, like I said in the beginning of the video, you're going to have a lot of success. Uh, okay, so one of my other favorite plays here is this PA shot wheel. And what you want to do is you want to take this slot and put him on a comeback, motion him over, kind of smart route kind of thing. This is going to help a ton with like a cover three. If he's in cover three here, we might be able to get it over the top. We'll see. And we're going to take a shot over the top. And we got him over the top. Nice dot. And that's huge. That's a huge touchdown. That gives us a three possession lead going into halftime. Very, very big deal. He was in palms. Uh, I don't think he was in match, though. I think he was in palms with zone drops, which means it plays similarly to like a cover four drop kind of defense. So the fact that that can be cover three and cover four over the top is absolutely huge. Trips tight end. This is one of the many reasons why trips tight end is so effective. Like I said, if you want to get the entire offense, um, you can get that in the description for just 10 bucks. This brings me to another point I want to talk about really quickly about offense. And that is that um, abilities. What abilities should you be using on your players? This is just my two cents. Um, I find that the short in elite ability and the short out elite ability are the two best that I've found. Um, I've tried mid in, I've tried deep in, I've tried mid out, deep out. Uh, I've tried all of those different types of abilities. You've probably heard by now at this point that people are realizing that the short in ability does not just include like catching. It's not just improved catching, but it's actually really good. It gives you really good route running against man coverage. So if my opponent starts running a lot of man coverage, 
then I can uh, just simply work this George Kittle card because he's got the short and elite ability on him, and he's going to be able to get consistent separation on that curl flat corner route because short and elite doesn't just apply to in-breaking routes. It applies to any route that breaks within the numbers. So as long as they're within the numbers, they're good, and that's why this is such a good ability. So you see, if he, run, if he ever runs man coverage on that left side, Kittle will get literally wide. He'll get naked open, literally just naked. Um, this is why I like this concept right here. I'm actually really going, I'm, I've really been finding myself falling a little bit more in love with Crow Flat. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this play um, just because of how it works. But my favorite way to run it is actually these double hitches. And the reason why I like this um, is because most people uh, are not going to be able to defend this little smoke screen. I find the smoke screen that's not very many people run a smoke screen this year, but I find smoke screens to be really effective. Another thing really quickly about cover three I want to talk about while I'm thinking about it. Um, and he might be, he might have switched here to man uh, just for this situation. So we're going to run these double hitches. But if you watch Randy Moss here, and let's just see. No, he is in man coverage. Um, okay. So we're just going to low ball. And that's actually good user by him, good play by him. That's a big turnover, too. That kind of keeps him in the game. I, I tried low ball. I thought I had inside leverage, but he was able to get in front of me. Um, I was going to talk about out routes, but I'll talk about that on the next drive. Back to defense here for just a second. So, again, uh, one of the things that I like to do, so I know that the 3-3-5, uh, the biggest weakness is that little seam streak. Um, and that's pretty good. That's pretty good defense right there. Um, the, the biggest weakness is the backside seam streak. So what I like to do is I like to sh typically will shift my defensive line to the um, opposite side of the cover three. So if you're looking at this play LB cross, I would shift my line to the right. Okay, so it's the same situation here. So you'll see like cover three is... Um, this way, so what we're gonna do, and, and with bunch, it's a little different because you don't have to worry about it. And here, I, he just got me with a quick snap, so good. And he spun me out. Gosh dang it, that's bad defense by me. That's what I talk about. Like when I don't get my setup in, stuff like that happens. Um, but here, you'll see. Let's see if he goes to a run. Bunch is a little unique because they don't have like a seam, a, like they, they don't have like a seam uh, that, that you have to worry about. You don't really have to worry about that. Um, so what I like to do is put him on the left side in either a vertical hook or a three rack hook. The reason why is because if there's a vertical route that goes that way, he'll oftentimes jump it. So like spread's a good example, a little bit better example. And we'll see if he runs here. He might, he, sh he probably should. Yeah, he's going to run. Um, one of the other things I want to hit on just briefly um, is I have a really, really good uh, – I have a really, really, really good red zone defense right now out of the play. Um, oh, I threw it right to me and I didn't hit triangle. I have a – so one of my favorite little red zone defenses, if he goes for this, I'll show it to you right now. Um, it's – it's. I think it's pretty dang good. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to come out in this 44. If he was running, we would come out in the 44. Since he's not, we're just going to go to Mike Blitz 3. But it's basically leveraging the power – of the cover three match style defense. We'll see if he goes to a run here. This actually might be a run. Nope, no run. And gosh dang, he got us. Okay, good job. I have. But what I, what I like to do is use this cover three match out of the 4-4 four, four split typically. Um, I should have shifted to the big nickel and ran cover three match out of there. I was trying to run cover three match out of the nickel um, out of the nickel 3-5. I might have I might have even should have gone to the nickel normal. But the cover three match inside the five yard line, I think it's one of the better coverages because it matches really well. As long as they're in some type of two by two thing, it does a really good job at matching different things. Now, if they're not in a two by two, I'd probably recommend maybe like a cover four quarters or something like that. But it does a really good job on like hitches and it's kind of a smart coverage because they kind of recognize where they're at on the field. And when you take away your zone drops, you find, I'll find, I will tell you that it does play a lot of those little like slants and posts and things like that. Man coverage is good, but slants can kind of expose man coverage inside the five yard line. So you see people, um, so so that's just kind of some, just some things that I've learned. Okay, so back to offense like I was talking about. Um, so if, if he's gonna run cover three, and I haven't gone to this play setup yet, this is probably my favorite way to beat cover three, and it's a really easy. Um, so I'm just watching this corner on the left if, or the right. If he backs up like that, if he turns his hips and runs, I'm just going to throw this little quick out. 
Um, this is something that I learned from the TNC crew. You've probably seen Fancy do this in tournaments and things like that. This is one of their really good reads. What it, um, the, the thing is, to get really good at it and get really consistent, you really have to learn how to master knowing when they're in cover three or not. This little motion right here will bring him inside, but if you'll watch here, I'm looking, if he does not turn, see how he turns his hips there? If he doesn't turn his hips, that means he's squatting on the on the route, it's like cover two, or if he mans up on him, right? That's what that means. So I will abuse this setup. This is probably one of my favorite setups in the game. Now you notice here that we get this look right here. This typically means, um, typically means they're in man-to-man -man coverage. So that's why I like to use, you know, these double hitches in this corner route, because if they are, then I can just work this this left this 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 solo, <coughs> um, this 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 backside uh, corner route. So, and you see here, I mean, he's running a lot of Mike Blitz three too. Biggest difference is I've got a lot of reps against Mike Blitz three. I know what to do against it, whereas he's not having a lot of success. And I think he's <coughs> probably running a little bit different of a zone drop cocktail uh, than I'm running. But that's why these hitches are so 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 important. So you see here, if the corners are back, and this is an oldie, an, kind of an old tip. But if common, conventional wisdom, if the corners are back, throw the out. So like right here, see, he's back. So we just throw it out there, and it's an easy, easy, easy dot. Now, if they, um, if that slot corner is like kind of cheating out there, which is what's going to start to happen, they'll start to cheat. They'll start to cheat their corner out there. Then that's where you know you just kind of run your basic setup right here. You just kind of leave it as is, and then you'll see here that this little quick flat uh, can do a pretty doggone good job. Uh, a pretty doggone good job. The other thing that I would tell you about these little quick flat routes, I actually don't like, uh, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with them this year. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things that I find that they're not as effective as I'd like them to be from trips. They're actually a lot better from bunch, just compression. But there you see, there's that short out or short in elite ability lighting up against man coverage. And we're able to just consistently work the ball down the field. That's kind of been the story of this game. We haven't really gone much to any of our other setups. We really haven't needed them. Um, we've just kind of been super consistent with this. So in a defense where they're playing, you know, kind of like this right here, you know, this is where, again, we just want to continue to work this concept. There's that short out elite again, or short in elite, I'm sorry, is what I, is what I have equipped to him. And as you can see, it does a really good job at just beating the man-to-man -man coverage consistently. Now, he did swoop down with his user. Um, that's something you got to watch for. Sometimes they will do that. Another thing about main coverage with this bubble screen, um, you'll see that this bubble screen actually does a really good job against man. So if they, it's, it's one of the fewer bubble screens in the game that you can consistently rely on against man-to-man -man coverage. If they run a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, you can go to this. It's just you really have to be intentional about reading it. If, it's, if they jump out, then, then don't throw it, right? Don't throw it. Like right there, they kind of jumped out a little bit at me, so I didn't throw it. Now, real quick here, we're down by 10. So, um, you know, it is one of those things where it's like, well, we would like to score here, okay? So what I like to do when I like to score is I basically like to use this kind of concept right here. Just a, essentially a, I actually like to do it out of curl flat. So what I like is a smart routed corner right to the tight end. The reason, what, primary reason for that is because it just does a really good job against man. So if they run man, I have that read. And then my zone read is actually gonna be this left side. So what I like to do is I like to drag this, this guy here. And then I like this little uh, hot route master post. Uh, and, the re and I'm gonna typically smart route that post. Um, you don't have to, but I, I don't know. I mean, you can, you can kind of make an, an argument for either way. But he's showing zone coverage. Um, and here, you actually play good defense. So another quick tip is if you're in the inside like the 20, like if you're in the red zone, uh, if you throw the ball, like if you throw the ball away, like you click the right joystick to throw the ball away, it never throws the ball to a receiver. It just throws it out of the end zone every time, almost every single, I'm pretty sure it's 100% every time. The reason I'm saying that is you don't have to be worried about an intentional grounding inside the 20 yard line. And it might even be like inside the 15, but I know for sure, uh, I know for sure inside the 10, but I'm pretty sure it's just inside the 20. It's kind of a, a little mechanic and they put in the game uh, for red zone situations. So that's just something to kind of be aware of. You'll never get an intentional grounding if you throw the ball away inside the five or inside the 10 yard line for sure. And I'm pretty sure that you won't get one um, if you throw it away inside the 20, like inside the 20 yard lines. 
It's like right there, little corner, little post, little playmaker. And see how they just, like Sean Springs, you notice that he lit up and really came down hard on that. That's the mid zone KO. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. So we got the vertical hook here. We got this little crosser, and we didn't put our zone drops. That's why they're that's why they're kind of being a little weird. I didn't remember to reset them. What you have to this is another little discipline that you have to start to build into yourself. Um, I'm still learning to do this, but whenever you go back on defense, it's really important to check your coaching adjustments. Um, multiple reasons for that, but the biggest one is that. For what you just saw right there you're in a situation where you don't have your zone drop set and then you can get you know dotted um, and not even not even really have a chance so anyway right here he's got a little corner route on the sideline and that's kind of a frustrating dot but he did get us and looks like he's gonna hurry up here hurry up his play and we're just kind of watching a little qb scramble he's gonna try to get in with robert wow that's crazy so his golden ticket rg3 got in for the the score uh, so like real quick, you're gonna notice. So every time, if I'm if I'm playing really well, I will ch I will check those coaching adjustments every time I change possessions. You probably noticed I didn't do that much this game. Um, that's a mistake. I need to be checking those. You need to be checking those just to kind of make sure that you're on the right chain. Another thing is whenever you're on the kick return, technically you're a defense, so you don't have to pick your play first. So as you see here, I'm just waiting. Once it says at the bottom left, defense pick a play, and it'll tell you that they're in their kickoff formation, that means that they're not gonna onside kick, then you're free to click the return middle. That's just something that I, so it's a little bitty thing, but it makes a big difference. You'll find whenever you get, whenever you start to get better at this game, it's the little things that make a big difference. It's a little like not getting your zone drop set and getting dotted or not remembering that this beats this or whatever it might be, right? Um, not getting your setup in, not checking your zone drops, not going on conservative, things like that. Those are the things that end up costing you games. So, so anyway, um, if you take a look here, we're gonna actually, we're gonna bring Jones in motion on this play. So you see how this guy moves here? So we're really watching this guy on the left. He kind of squatted right there on that, so that's fine. And then we've got this nice little playmaker uh, to the outside. As you can see right there, that little playmaker uh, hitch typically will beat man coverage if they just like man somebody up on him. So you'll see a lot of times that people run like cover three, but they'll man up a slot or they'll, you know what I mean? That, that works really well for that, okay? And if they run traditional man-to-man -man coverage like he's probably about to on this play, uh, George Kittle should be pretty effective. Now, right here, um, well, we'll just we'll just run the play. So, as you'll see right there, see how he jumped out to the corner? That's going to leave this little route to the back wide open, and we're able to get really good good yardage. One thing I mistake mis made a mistake to do here, whenever you're trying to go, uh, especially when you're in a, a, a pretty big advantage on the offense, you just want to make sure that you shift to that conservative ball carrier. Um, it's a little thing, but it basically helps that. Helps with fumbles, makes, makes sure that you're not gonna fumble the ball. And then here you're gonna see, I'm gonna try to hit this RPO bubble. I just don't think he's gonna be playing underneath. So we're just gonna throw it out there and see. And that's actually a, a decent drop. I mean, you can kinda of go both ways there, but it's good defense by him. And now you see we've got him playing Tampa 2. So whenever we have somebody that is consistently gonna start playing some Tampa 2, then I like to go to this setup right here. Uh, this is a really really simple um, it's just more it's just basically a, a tampa 2 flood so you see it looks exactly the same everything looks exactly the same as the the curl flat setup but now if he's playing hard flat to cover two we're going to be able to hit this streak over the top and unfortunately we weren't able to catch it but we, we i feel like we kind of should have on that that would kind of got screwed on that that's okay um, but that that's a little you know just kind of a little you know little simple thing that we can do um, so again, we're gonna do kind of, we're probably gonna, we probably shouldn't go to the same thing, but we're going to, um, just just because I just feel like he's gonna be in that cover too. So we're gonna just run the same ba same basic setup here. And now you see he leaves the flat open, so we can just kind of rack catch that at the field a little bit. And now we're gonna put ourselves in a, in a little bit of an awkward position here. Um, you know, do you, do you go for it, do you not go for it? Well, you have to remember, he only has one timeout. We're in a situation where if we get this first down, it's more than likely that we're gonna be able to win this ball game. So we'll see if he shifts to main coverage. It looks like he is going to. So what we're gonna do on this play is we're actually going to run um, a little bit of an underneath 
um, underneath man beater kind of thing. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to block our running back just in case we get pressured. And we're going to use this in case he's in cover zero. Um, we've got a nice route to this, this post. We've also got this little out and up motion over route. And we're just kind of seeing uh, what he's doing. He's in cover zero, so we're at least going to throw it out there, give him a chance. And as you see, we get this nice rack catch to be able to secure the victory. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Again, if you want to get my entire um, trips tied in offensive guide, you can get that in the description for just 10 bucks. If you want to get my entire uh, Mike Blitz, or not, not Mike Blitz, uh, my entire nickel 335 wide defensive guide, you can get that in the description as well. The defense is 15 bucks. It walks you through everything step by step, exactly how to uh, just basically shut down everything. We talk about compression sets. We talk about bunch, bunch tight end, trips tight end, uh, tight off set. We talk about strong close, I-form close. We show you how to shoot every pretty much every run in the game. We show you all kinds of really, really good stuff in that defensive guide. So if you want to get that, that's in the description for just 15 bucks. But real quick, a couple takeaways from this uh, from this gameplay for you guys, if you're still watching, is that it's really, really important um, that you force them to have to actually beat the cover three first. If you can force them to have to beat a cover three defense, you're going to find that it's going to give you a lot more uh, success. See, like right here, he does have a cover three beater over the top. He didn't go to that all game, right? So he does have a cover three beater, so good, good on him, but he didn't go to it all game. Right, we were able to have get away with that running that same defense over and over again, and he never never forced us to have to respect that he had a cover three beater. If you're facing Mike Blitz three, get some cover three beaters, learn how to run them, and run them at a high level. But that's kind of the point of the uh, of everything is you want to start with something and then force them to have to get out of it. So uh, anyway, hopefully we'll get this onside kick recovery that I totally didn't follow my own advice uh, and just kind of came out and kick return. I think it's because it's pretty hard for him to win at this point. But anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want to get the trip side in offense for just 10 bucks, it's going to be available for you down in the description. If you want to get the uh, nickel 335 wide defense that I ran in this video, then you can get that down in the description as well. Thanks for watching.